Are you supposed to? Here, buddy. Cockbirds, yeah. Hi right, guys, so we're up here at the main, kind of the central location right here at the corral. I got some of my uh, yearlings right back here and Dunbar and them are right back over here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna walk down here in this lane. This is the lane where we had problems um, last year getting up. Now, we are three weeks ahead of schedule here and uh, I'm gonna start preparing. And, and, and I know Kevin spends more time over here um, right now so he's gonna do this as well and I know he'll start preparing them we're gonna get them to start coming down this lane that we had troubles with uh, last year and uh, I want to talk to you about some of the issues with this and, and why we have trouble um, with them coming down this lane but I've got a feed sack I've got a 50 pound sack of cubes that I always give them I'm gonna walk down this lane open the gate up and I've got this a lot of this long run here of our panel set up uh, of, of our corral here. I'm gonna let them come in here. I'm gonna see who will actually follow me in here. It's probably gonna be Dunbar and some of the more dominant ones, but I'm gonna let them follow me in here and see if I can get them just, it's a first step. Like we're still in early October here and we're working them in early November. So this is just kind of a first step of what we're gonna do. And so I'm gonna go out here, do that and see who follows me and uh, we'll see. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this gate right here. They're all come up and seeing what's going on. So see who comes through, so. All right, so far you got peaches and then you've got Dunbar over here. And then you can see their action. They see what's going on and they take off back through this lane. They know what's going on. Dunbar, he don't care. Here he is. That buzzing sound that you're hearing is a drone, so. I'm gonna go ahead and give him some cues. Let him know he's doing what he's supposed to. Here, buddy. All right, so now we got Quapaw, her calf, Peach is still. And uh, her 
pepper calf. Some of them are still trying to come in there. All right, so now we've got some more calves in here. We've got Kit, another head cow. Quaw Paul Dunbar finally made his way up here. You got Flo that's starting to kind of creep in. And see Eleanor, she's gonna stay way back for sure, but they're kind of getting in here a little bit. I'm gonna run down this lane here and put out some cubes so maybe it'll stretch them out where they're not so condensed in here. So Quaw Paul followed me in. Peaches followed me in. Both of their calves followed me in. Dunbar, he's creeping in as well. Here are some problems that we've had with this lane and, and catching these bison is one of the first issues is it's very narrow. A lot of the females that are lower on the um, hierarchy totem pole, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, the ones that are lower are typically won't come through there because they know that the uh, more aggressive ones such as Kit and Quapaw, which was one of the first two ones that came through this morning, are kind of rough and, and if you get in a tight corner uh bison always need an escape route and if they don't have that escape route where they can avoid um confrontation or avoid that uh, getting hit or hooked whatever you want to call it they won't do it and eleanor's one of the last ones in bell star who's she's a little got a little cuckoo in her um they know what they've been through on this situation so they're the last ones to actually come through and uh, that's just the nature of the beast there this is all part of the pecking order um, with bison and it's such a huge uh, social class between um, all these herds of bison that's just part of it in their life so two they just know they've been through this before they've been down this road before and they know what happens they get caught and they get worked or something happens so those are two of the biggest issues is uh, these animals are smart uh, you know if they're hungry you can really kind of um, get their attention and get them to do things with cubes which is what I did and you saw the dominant ones reacted to it so um, so that's one thing you have to strategize is how hungry um, are they and right now we're in the drought so they're getting hay and cubes every now and then in a, in a protein uh, tub here comes Dunbar a little red dog He's like, oh, uh, nope. Hey, buddy. Let's see if I'm a cockbird again. Yeah. So what I may do is I may actually send them uh, another way. Take a look at this. This is uh, basically the furthest east side of, of our property here. And it's where the silos actually sit. And uh, right now we've got Eleanor's bull in here and another bull in here with him. Um, what I'm thinking about doing is opening up this gate right here next to the water tank. I'm going to move these two bulls and we're going to just let them come in here in the smaller lot. With there being plenty of room in here, uh, there is there is enough room in here for the entire nine adults, the Dunbar herd, to be in here with their calves. And then uh, it's going to be one of those situations where they're in here and then we have to catch them while they're in here and shut a gate. Now, one thing I like about this is that's their way out. And their way out is freestanding panels, which I put uh, put up for these bulls earlier in the year. So if it does get rough and rowdy, you've got the continuous panels. Now you don't want to get rough and rowdy on this uh, field fence stuff right here, or a barbed wire because it can get it can get kind of gnarly. So I think we're going to try that method because the lane is not working. And then we can go from this lot to a smaller lot, which Kevin and I built two years ago. Uh, and once we get them in there, we've got them. And then we can also get them to go down our long run by mom and Kevin's house. And then if we got to put Eleanor's bull and this young yearling bull in here with them, it's not a big deal because uh, he, Eleanor's bull is not very, he's not very old. He's only two years old. So 
I think we'll be able to do that and uh, we'll be okay. So those are the thoughts anyway, just off of going off of this this morning. Like I said, we're uh, a little bit less than a month out on working uh, the Dunbar herd and just to keep you up updated with everything, but we're gonna work them all on the same day like we did last year. So um, just get ready for that. We're gonna work the Dunbar herd here in the morning and then we'll go over to the Ponderosa and Doc's gonna bring his system down in the afternoon and we'll work all of those animals at the Ponderosa. And that will be our biggest uh, herd working at uh, just me being a bison owner rancher um, ever uh, with all those animals. So we've got over 30 animals at the Ponderosa, which is still not very many, but it's a lot for us uh, over at the Ponderosa. So we've got some changes to make here and we're gonna try to see if we can get these animals in another way but we're getting way ahead and we're being proactive here unlike i was last year and i took the blame for that we're being proactive here and we're going to try to start getting these animals in we probably could even put a bale of hay in there to try to get them to start coming in and kevin helps me out with this a bunch and he's he's really good with it so thankful for kevin as well I'm gonna keep this open and let them come in and out of here and uh, then we'll shut it off and we'll make sure we're gonna try this other side, the silo side, to see if we can get them caught in there. Start the routine basis and then close to working day, the night before, hopefully we can catch them. Let's head to the Ponderoso. Came out here to put a bale of hay out to the yearlings that are hanging out over here in pasture one. And uh, just noticed you know, some of these cracks. No telling how far they go down in there. Lots of them everywhere. That's how it is right now. Like it's starting to rain a little bit. I gotta get our bulk feeder, our Oklahoma Pride feeder from here. I'm gonna put it over on that side of the barn, start getting the yearlings to come up to the corral to the main area, just kind of get their minds on it a little bit and uh, start feeding them back there because uh, working uh, is about three weeks away. They're down here right now, but I, so I've got them in pasture one, but they have access to the crowd. I'm gonna go ahead and put that feeder back there so they can get used to this. So I'm gonna hook this up real quick. short and I have to back up a little bit. What I did was, is a couple weeks ago, I had to brush hog around the uh, the burn unit, the uh, 80 acres. And I've done this, this will be my second time to do it. And so um, we did that and there are some requirements whenever you burn with the NRCS 
or the oaks and prairies when you work with these programs there's requirements you've got to have a fire break within so uh so many feet wide and all that stuff so much timber pushed in so that's what i've been doing um, brush hogging these fire breaks this is a very important part of the entire burn it's probably one of the most important parts is getting that fire lane fire break established um, by brush hogging you know 15 to 20 foot wide on these uh, fence lines and so borrowing uh, the tractor and his uh, like 15 foot wide brush hog uh, richard who i'll borrow lots of stuff from good neighbors it's always good to have good neighbors i don't mention that so many times brush hogging these fire lines and getting it done and getting this fire ready to go which you will see on our next video i promise you guys hope you're excited to see it it was a lot of fun but also something exciting the office is done i got just a couple of little trim things to do and we're going to start moving into the office so um, I had to blast, so I almost blast me, so I had to get on this side of the trailer, but uh, the office is done and we are uh, going to start um, putting stuff in it. So we're going to bring you along on that and show you, hey, the office as well. Oh, there's Betty. Betty came to see what was going on. Um, and then, so we'll show you the office and the updates to it. Thor, Thor, it's okay. Come here, come here need some love and her attention or something so and Maya don't forget about Maya uh, Cole helped me finish it out and then Sam uh, my former student and player helped me finish it out as well so excited to bring that to you guys as well thank you guys for watching and being a part of this and we're getting excited and closer to working the bison you guys thank you for watching see you soon